Hello everyone and welcome to this, the latest episode of Wordy Wednesday from Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. And once again in the background you can see uh, little Elvis. He's a bit tired after coming back from his walk. So he's doing what he normally does and probably goes to sleep for uh, the rest of the morning at least. Um, so yes, uh, another episode of Wordy Wednesday, episode 6 in fact. And uh, we finally come to the part in our story where Johnson begins on his dictionary. Um, and that starts off in 1746 when a group of publishers approached him with an idea of creating a dictionary of the English language. Um, of course, dictionaries existed before, but they wanted something, uh, something a bit different. So they went to, they went to Johnson. Um, he signed a contract worth around 1,500 guineas, which I believe is around or two hundred thousand pounds in today's money, so that's not too bad. Um, and he was told he should finish the project within three years, which was a really big task because the French Academy, the Academy Francais, they compiled their own dictionary and they had around forty scholars working on it, and it took them forty years to complete it. Um, Johnson himself, though, unfortunately, didn't complete the work within three years, but he did manage it in eight, which is a really uh, considerable achievement, I think. Uh, some people did criticise his dictionary, including uh, Thomas Babington Macaulay, who described it as a wretched. Uh, sorry, he described Johnson rather as a wretched etymologist. However, um, Bate uh, described the dictionary. He said it easily ranks as one of the greatest single achievements of scholarship and probably the greatest ever performed by one individual. Though we have to say, of course, he did he did have help as he didn't do it all completely on his own. So I get distracted by this dark light, dark light thing. It's very frustrating. I hope it doesn't, uh, doesn't bother you too much. Um, so yeah, where was I? Yeah, he did have uh, helpers, but still, it is a great achievement uh, to do it in such a short length of time. Um, so, as I said, his dictionary wasn't uh, first, and it wasn't particularly unique, but it did become the most commonly used dictionary, um, or other dictionaries based on it, for around um, 150 years, really, uh, between the first time it was published, up until the uh, completion of the Oxford English Dictionary, the OED, in 1928. Uh, David Hume claimed, the elegance and propriety of style have been very much neglected among us. We have no dictionary of our language and scarce a tolerable grammar. Johnson's dictionary offers insights into 18th century, into the 18th century rather, and it gives us a faithful record of the language people used at the time. And, uh, you know, many agree that it's much more than just a reference book. It is actually a work of literature, which is nice. However, during the time Johnson was working on this, his wife Elizabeth was taken ill and she decided in 1752 to return to the countryside while Johnson was busy in London working on his dictionary. Unfortunately, she died uh, on the 17th of March, uh, 1752, and Johnson was very, very upset, of course, at the death of his wife. And he wrote to his friend um, Taylor and Taylor said that the... Um, that Johnson, in his letter, expressed grief in the strongest manner that he had ever read. So that says something. Anyway, going to move on to our definitions for this week. Um, I did try to look up uh, a definition of the word turnip in tribute to the tag video um, around the world in 80 tag prompts that Roz at Scally Danling about the books did this week, and she mentioned the phrase turnip as being used as an insult, so turnip, turnip head. Unfortunately, I could only find a definition for the vegetable uh, itself, though whilst looking, it did remind me of um, the Dr. Johnson episode of Blackadder. Uh, Blackadder was an 80s uh, comedy that I've mentioned before, I think, in one of these videos, um, kind of historical comedy. And there's a nice exchange in that where uh, Baldrick, which is like the manservant to the servant of the Prince Regent, who is uh, the, the, the Prince Regent's butler, if you like, um, is Blackadder, played by Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean fame, of course, Johnny English. Um, and he asks um, Blackadder, he says, Sir, can I look up turnip? And Blackadder says, 
Turnip isn't a rude word, Baldrick. And then Baldrick says, it is if you sit on one, which I quite like. Uh, of course, a small disclaimer, though, I'm sure it hardly needs to be said. The series is completely wrong in terms of timeline. Johnson had actually been dead at quite a while um, before uh, most of what happens in this episode of Blackadder takes place. Um, and some of the characters may not even have been born, actually, uh, before Johnson uh, died. But it's still fun, and, uh, you know, it's worth checking out if you haven't ever seen it. Uh, though, of course, you don't really need me to tell you this, that you shouldn't rely on uh, a comedy series for historical fact. But, you know, just in case someone says, oh, yeah, but it's not real, yeah. Uh, okay, so our definitions this week. We have a few, a few of them a little bit uh, rude, perhaps. Uh, our first one is uh, gynecocracy, gynecocracy, uh, which Johnson just defines as a petticoat government. So I'm assuming he means something as being like ruled by women. So I guess that gives you some indication of the feeling at the time uh, of maybe uh, domineering women. So gynecocracy, a petticoat government. The next one I really like because it pertains really to the work Johnson's doing himself, with, which is uh, lexicographer, lexicographer. And he, he defines it as a writer of dictionaries, a harmless drudge that busies himself in tracing the original and detailing the signification of words. And I think that's very nice. Uh, the next one is oats. Oats. And he defines it as a grain, which in England is generally given to horses, but in Scotland supports the people. There you go. Uh, he quotes Miller, or he uses a quotation from Miller uh, in this, and he says, it is of the grass uh, leave to tribe, the flowers have no petals and are disposed in loose panicle, the grain is eatable, the meal makes tolerable good bread. So there you go. Uh, the next one is quite a strange word, which is piss burnt, piss burnt, and simply it's an adjective that means stained with urine. There you go. So next time you pass a wall that uh, a dog has uh, gone up against, mm -hmm. not pointing any fingers, we can describe that wall as piss burnt. Uh, our next definition is for the word politician. Politician, and the first definition he gives is one versed in the arts of government, one skilled in politics. And he quotes from King Lear, Get thee glass eyes, and like a scurvy politician seem to see things thou dost not. And the second definition he gives is a man of artifice, one of deep contrivance. And I think we appreciate that today. And he quotes here from South, If a man succeeds in any attempt, though undertook with never so much rashness, his success shall vouch him a politician, and good luck shall pass for deep contrivance, Will give anyone fortune, and he shall be thought a wise man. And our last word for today is shapesmith, and it's a noun, and it's one who undertakes to improve the form of the body. A, burles a burlesque word, Johnson says. So basically, it's a, a gym nut, I suppose, or a personal trainer. And he quotes this time from Garth, and he says, No shapesmith yet set up and drove a trade to mend the work that providence had made. So next time someone has a go at you uh, for your weight or whatever, um, you can kid yourself uh, by remembering uh, the quotation and the definition of the word shapesmith from Johnson. So I, I'm not sure how many episodes of this particular series we've got left in terms of studying, or not studying, but looking at an overview of Johnson, because we're coming fairly near the end. So we might have definitely at least one more, maybe two more. And then after that, I have a few other ideas uh, to carry on looking at words and interesting uh, forms related uh, to language. Super. So that's it for our sixth installment of Wordy Wednesday. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best and, you know, take care of yourselves, stay healthy and look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Take care and all the best. Bye-bye, BookTube.